No, oh my God, I feel like it's been forever. Um, ah, where to begin? I think there's really one combination of factors that I would want to focus on for today because I think it's the most important thing. Um, so we've had Mars and Mercury opposite Saturn for like a week, a week and a, no, it's been more than that. It's been probably like two weeks, something like that. Um, in any case, uh, <laughs> even with things that are going good, and I think that's a really important to keep in mind during this time, is the stuff that is working, the stuff that's going right, because as always, <clears throat> excuse me, there's always good things going on. Um, but I think even with what is uh, going right, we're, we've all, and everyone's going to be experiencing this, you know, to some extent or another, uh, some more so, maybe because Saturn's in this particular part of their chart opposite that or square that or whatever. But it doesn't matter to what degree we've all been experiencing a sense of, with Saturn opposite Mercury and Mars, a sense of restraint, a sense of being held back, a sense of delay, a sense of maybe confusion, a sense of stifling. So even if things are good, you know, it's like, cool, I know where I'm trying to get to. I'm excited to get there. Well, I'm still not experiencing that progress, right? Um, so I just looked it up. This is just rough, uh, but I think we've been experiencing Saturn upset Mars for like maybe two, maybe even two and a half weeks, something like that. Um, and we've been experiencing, uh, yeah, about two and a half weeks. And then with Mercury, we've been experiencing it for majorly, I would say, the last like week and a half. So... The key for this is just like in January, <laughs> just a, a lot of February, especially that first part, and especially May. <laughs> this, we're in this time period where, and, and I think from August, let's not jump forward. Let's stay we'll focus on where we are now, then we'll look into the near future. Um, we're in this time period of having to be patient having to take care of things that maybe we hadn't foreseen we need to take care of or or maybe we just need to be way waiting you know maybe this is not the time to move forward with things or, or whatever it might be um, a lot of internal reflection potentially as well which you know can be very all of this can be very valuable uh, but it can also be very frustrating Especially if we're trying to force things, especially if we feel like, oh, I need to get this done now. And I think especially with the moon being in Aries for today and for tomorrow, if we just keep that in mind of, excuse me, <coughs> of we got to be patient and we just got to make the best of where we are. And ultimately with these kind of oppositions, we need to be uniting the two different energies, you know. We're being pulled, literally, if you look at our solar system, Saturn's on this side of the Earth, Mercury and Mars are on this side. They're pulling us in different directions, and yet, with every opposition, there's a bridge. We are meant to find that bridge. So, first let's look at the diff different sides. Mercury and Mars, Virgo. Attention to detail, information, but not so much Gemini information, but attention, okay, I need to learn this, I need to master this skill, I need to be able to get this done in this particular amount of time, I gotta get it all right, right? Uh, attention to detail is a big one. And the ability to get things done at this time is great. The challenge here is Saturn over here, I mean, it can manifest for different people, so it's hard to say exactly how it's gonna, ma gonna manifest for everyone, but I think the challenge here is Saturn is particularly being in Pisces and with this these energies we can feel like it's cloudy of where are we going some people may not know what their goals are or why they're important or what their goal should be in life some people are going to experience oh, I don't know I'm not they know exactly what they're seeking to accomplish but they oh well no uh, side side thing there's a whole other thing even if we do have things that are very clear there are things that God has in store for us that's a surprise in a good way um, we'll, we'll get into that it has a lot to do with Venus retrograde we'll, we'll get into that um, wow it's been a while because Venus has been retrograde for like a week and a half or 
two weeks too. Anyways, life. Um, so, uh, in any case, it can still feel frustrating of how much progress are we making? It can be unclear. Saturn and Pisces, again, Saturn and Pisces is a great energy and every energy is great. But this particular opposition, Saturn and Pisces is kind of the, I mean, you know, it takes two to tango, but it's kind of can be seen as the challenging element here because it's retrograde. And these Virgo energies thrive more so when things are very clear. So Saturn and Pisces is making the situation a little bit challenging for us where we feel like, again, oh, we're being delayed, things aren't quite ready, or maybe like, yeah, I'm toiling away, but am I reaching anywhere? I can feel like the, the Greek myth of Sisyphus where you had to push up this boulder up a hill only for it to roll back down and do it all over again. It can feel like that sometimes, especially with this Virgo, like focusing on the little details and not necessarily seeing the bigger picture of how it fits into everything. I think the key is this. With Saturn, we have to be patient and we need to be serious in the sense, you know, we never want to lose our inner child's laughter, right? And, and our sense of fun and enjoyment and wonder with life. It can be difficult during times like these, but it's essential to preserve that. Um, we need to be serious about our intent. What are we seeking to accomplish? What is our purpose in life? What are we seeking to do? What are we seeking to contribute to the world? Um, and then I think the key is just simplify. Don't focus on, oh, am I getting there? Am I getting, no, no, no. It's like, you know, it's like asking on a road trip, are we there yet? It makes it worse. It stretches an hour into five hours, you know, vibe wise, perception wise. Um, don't focus on, the negative too much. I think that's really important because that's the bridge here, potentially in a kind of a challenging way, almost like a ravine or something. Um, both of these energies, all these, all three of these energies can focus on the negative too much. So really important to keep that in mind. Um, before I forget, uh, I love doing readings. I've been doing readings for over a decade. Come get a reading if, if you'd like more information about this in your life or about your own chart or love life or life purpose or whatever it might be um, info in the about section to to go to my website and book a reading with me uh, just you'll find my email address through um, my website and then you can contact me through that a lot of people press the button I don't even know what button is on there so I can't fix that problem <laughs> I don't know what it is but yeah you'll find my email address and you can email me and I'm happy to to read for you um, whether I've read for you before or I've never read for you before I'm happy to read for you but anyways um so that's the kind of challenge of all these energies is they can focus on the negative too much. You can focus on what's not going right, what's not there, what needs to be fixed, what needs to be improved upon, etc. And it's so easy at this time to lose sight. I've been struggling with this myself. I think those with a lot of Gemini like myself or Sagittarius can particularly be struggling with this. And by the way, the good news of all this is it's dissipating. It's getting easier to work with. So, so awesome. Um, but this is going to be a theme for the next foreseeable future because mercury goes retrograde by the way it won't be exactly opposite saturn though even with it going retrograde so i think we've been through the harshest part but not to mention mars is continuing to move forward our mars retrograde was january that's that was that morass morass is a word that's been in my head a lot that that swamp of the beginning of the year um again january and then may we had uh yeah, Mercury retrograde is combining with, with aspects in a very powerful way this year, which is good in a lot of ways, as per being able to make meaningful changes to really make sure we, we cross our T's and dot our I's and have everything in place for the next big shift in our lives. Excellent. Um, but fuck, it can be frustrating. <laughs> it can be very frustrating because we want to be here. We want to get here and we're just not there. And that's okay. That's okay. You know, our expectations, our time is not God's time. Let God work everything out. It's all good. You know, that it's all good. Um, so we have to remind ourselves these things. And sometimes we need to make transit videos to remind ourselves these things. But anyways, um, but yeah, I think those are the why Gemini and Sagittarius have particularly been challenged because it's, it was forming a T-square in our charts. So again, it's getting easier though. Again, we do have a Mercury retrograde. So this is these are still themes that we all need to keep in mind for the foreseeable future. But yeah, I'm looking at it now. The retrograde, Mars moves on into Libra by the time Mercury retrograde is making, it will still be in Virgo. Um, but I'm just looking up the, 
So Mercury will retrograde to just about uh, opposite Saturn, but it's not going to be quite the same opposition that we've been experiencing um, for the past. So I would say, especially earlier this week, but I mean, even where we are now and, you know, the, maybe the next week. But again, we've been through the, the harshest part. We've been through the ringer of this, but still, this is something that's good for all of us to keep in mind. Um, is again, let's, let's wrapping this up, being patient, um, seeing, having faith, having faith in the big picture. I mean, we need to kind of logically figure out, like solve that puzzle for ourselves. What is my big picture? What should I be working on right now? Um, et cetera. Making sure that we're not getting angry, we're not getting anxious by, those are two different things, but you know, focusing on anxiety first, you know, meditating, um, especially before going to sleep. I've been doing that a lot over the last maybe month or so. And this has been really helpful with this, helped me to get sleep a lot faster. It, I, otherwise, I suffer from insomnia a lot. So, the, you know, five minutes too, five minute meditation. So uh, just a quick functional meditation or as many minutes as you need, fine. But, you know, usually, especially with Mercury being conjunct Mars, there's a, a focus of efficiency, there's a focus of productivity. And again, that's the very great bridge between Saturn opposite all this Virgo is once we do make things very clear of, okay, this is what I'm seeking to do. Um, this is the dream that I want to physically manifest on the, you know, in, in this life, on this planet. Then we're able to take steps to reach that goal in a very tangible way. <coughs> Excuse me. Having tangible progress. Um, the challenge is that we it's skewed of I want to get this much done and we're only getting this much done so focus on what's getting done focus on the positive um, and I think that's where you find that positive bridge between the two is you're bringing that that beautiful vision into manifest reality um, you're marrying those two different things so staying patient staying um, calm relaxing taking deep breaths that's really important going for walks Virgo energy is very centered on, on the body as well as the mind. So uniting the two, making sure that you're eating healthy and drinking a lot of water, sleeping enough, being very responsible in your, your schedule for self-care as well as all of this productivity and efficiency and all of that. That's really essential. And I think that's where you're going to find, you're going to at least make it easier to deal with these energies. But I also think that's where you'll find that kind of peak efficiency. First and foremost, self-care is necessary in and of itself we don't need to justify it with results but it's it's kind of nice that we we do satisfy those needs as well for moving forward and and whatnot as well as taking care of our needs which is true of any time period but i think especially this time period okay anyways um there's more that we could talk about but that's that's really the gist of it i think the main thing with venus retrograde is to enjoy reaching out to people from the past there's been something on my mind that i've needed to apologize for for like 11 years um <laughs> uh, to two different friends from way back when and i finally did it um uh, and and i mean I, I i don't know it's just like it was on my mind and i i felt bad about it i knew i was going to apologize for it but it just it wasn't the right time so that was really cool one of them didn't even remember the other faintly remembered so it was, it was funny how you know but it, it, it was wiping the slate clean and being able to move forward, which is so much of what Venus retrograde is all about, um, is making sure our relationships are are clear and free and moving forward. Um, and the other one was uh, two different friends from the past reached out to me. One I'd been meaning to talk to. The other, um, I hadn't, you know, I, I was just focused on life. And, you know, as much as there's so much esteem in my heart, uh, for this person's like I just kind of lost track and I was like oh yeah I need to reach out to them like they're this is we can this it's mutually good there's a lot of really good stuff here and um, that was that's been very very good and I know that that's going to continue to grow so um that's the beauty of retrogrades it helps us to and that's good to keep in mind with what we're talking about too because again with Saturn being retrograde it's like making sure we're getting stuff done uh internally and I think that's the other thing not to switch back to what we're talking about but that's something so much of this progress we're making is internally and is an emotional thing. Saturn and Pisces is all about that. Uh, Virgo too, you know, is all about again wellness. So clearing things up mentally and emotionally—that's that's really the great bridge too at this time, um, and that will translate also into being able to accomplish our goals in a, a physical way, in a tangible way. Um, but yeah, that's that's. Uh, that's the beauty of retrogrades is it 
it reminds us to slow down and it reminds us to look back on our lives and whatever sphere that that particular astronomical body is in so again so for venus you know saturn and venus uh saturn like i'm saying you know seriousness purpose etc also lessons like stuff we gotta get done stuff we gotta learn etc stuff we gotta contribute and then venus relationships i love life too for sure um but relationships in general wow i totally forgot um love life is a big love life challenges is a big theme at this time and um that's not necessarily bad even with relationships that long term are very beneficial and are 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 in both persons interest to continue investing time and energy and this kind of transit with venus retrograde can bring up challenges that need to be resolved especially since it's in leo um, challenges of individuality independence making sure both people are shining in their own unique light allowing their sunshine to come through being their own their own star because you know uh, the uh, leo's ruled by the sun our star and our solar system so we all have Leo energy somewhere in our chart. And um, if we have a lot of Leos, take on even more importance. But I think the key for all of us, which is important for all of us, is to make sure that we are honoring ourselves as individuals in all of our relationships. And I think especially in love life scenarios, but with regular, any kind of relationship as well, being respectful of ourselves, um, being compassionate of ourselves also being of course respectful of others and compassionate with others if we're having problems with other people it's really important to go inwards figure out what boundaries need to be set as well as you know if we're starting drama with other people or whatever it's like okay how do i uh create good positive energy how do i get attention in a positive way with my heart um so you know we're human sometimes we gotta remind ourselves of these things so Anyways, again, always happy to do readings. Always happy to do transit readings. Um, readings about section, transit reading, done. Infinite love to you, my friends. Namaste. Peace.